Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue with our lesson on Chapter 2, Ecology. We're going to dive right in with subtopic 2.2, Energy Flow Through Ecosystems. If you're ready, let's begin. As per usual, let's have a look at the learning outcomes before we dive right into the content. I hope that by the end of this video, you will be able to explain the energy transfer in ecological pyramids in relation to trophic level and also calculate the energy loss in each trophic level. So those are the learning outcomes and they're the more complicated part of the subtopic, but we're actually going to start by looking at something very familiar to you. So you've learned this in middle school and even in primary school before, we're going to be talking about the food chain. Now, the food chain is talking about the pathway of energy transfer from one trophic level to another. It shows a linear feeding relationship. So, there are several types of food chains, but we're going to talk about only two, really. The first type of food chain is a grazing food chain, which is the normal ones that begin with green plants or producers at the first trophic level. And the second type of food chain is the detritus food chain which is a food chain that begins with detritus, such as fallen leaves or dead organic matter, that are then eaten by a detritivore and then by their predators. Let's have a look at an example of the grazing food chain. An example of grazing food chain is a predatory food chain. When you start with a producer like grass, it gets eaten by the primary consumer. In this case, it's grasshopper. The primary consumer is eaten by a secondary consumer, which in this case is a frog. That frog will be eaten by a snake. The snake is the tertiary consumer. And the snake may get eaten by an owl, which is the quaternary consumer. So you see here, grass to grasshopper, grasshopper to frog frog to snake, snake to owl, that is a predatory food chain. There is also the parasitic food chain. So in this case, we could look at the grass once again. The grass is eaten by a cow, which is the primary consumer. On the cow, there are fleas. Okay, kutu atas lembu itu adalah secondary consumer. The secondary consumer, inside of the fleas, we have the tertiary consumer, which is a type of protozoa. So here you see the parasitic food chain starts normal with the grass followed by the cow. But then the cow is parasitized by fleas and the fleas is parasitized by the protozoa. So that is another interesting take on the grazing food chain. Now we'll have a look at the detritus food chain. In this example I have here, we are going to start with the detritus of leaf litter. So ini adalah daun-daun yang gugur. Okay, daun gugur itu kita gelar sebagai producer kita dalam detritus food chain. The leaf litter is eaten by an earthworm, which is the primary consumer. The earthworm will be eaten by a blackbird, which is the secondary consumer. And the blackbird will be eaten by a sparrow or a hawk which will be the tertiary consumer. The energy for grazing food chains will come from the sun, while the energy for detritus food chain will come from detritus. So I hope so far it's quite clear. Ini adalah rangkanan, rangkaian makanan, seperti mana yang kita pernah belajar sebelum ini. Of course, food chains are not the only way to look at the interactions between organisms. We can also do food webs. Kalau tadi adalah rantaian makanan, ini adalah rangkaian makanan. So, a food web is the interconnection of several food chains. And it shows an interconnected feeding relationship. In food webs, it shows all possible transfers of energy and nutrients among organisms. As you can see here, from one food web, we can extract many food chains. The arrows will show the direction of energy flow and the type of energy that is channeled through the food chain is chemical energy only. So first food chain, phytoplankton eaten by copepods, copepods eaten by squids, squids eaten by elephant seals, elephant seals eaten by smaller toothed whales. Second food chain we can have here is from phytoplankton to copepods, copepods to carnivorous plankton, carnivorous plankton to birds, and birds eaten by leopard seals. 
Another example, phytoplankton eaten by euphosids, euphosids eaten by carnivorous plankton, carnivorous plankton eaten by squids, squids eaten by sperms, sperm whales, just to be clear. So those are just three of the many food chains that you can construct from one food web. What I want to just talk about here is that food web is more realistic than a food chain because an organism can of course occupy more than one trophic level in an ecosystem and the food web contains more than one food chain which is like what happens in nature anyways right and that brings us to the next concern which is trophic level so i'm sure you remember a little bit about this before when we talk about the producers primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer we're actually referring more to their trophic levels trophic level is the position of an organism in a food chain or food web so this involves both producers and consumers decomposers or detritivores are considered to occupy their own trophic level so this is trophic level one producers and uh, decomposers dia punya asing punya category as you can see here most trophic levels are usually up until trophic level four or maximum five why can't a food chain consist of more than five trophic levels do pause and have a think if you're ready continue with the video okay the reason why we can't have a food chain that consists of more than five trophic levels is because energy decreases when it is transferred from one trophic level to another so daripada rumput ini uh, sorry this one is padi so daripada padi ini pergi kepada tikus sebahagian daripada tenaga dalam bentuk chemical energy itu sudah digunakan sudah hilang daripada tikus pergi kepada ular tenaga yang tikus ada tadi itu pun hilang okay it's not 100% going to the next trophic level energy is lost as heat through respiration through excretion through transpiration through decomposition when the organism is dead so each trophic level will receive less energy than the trophic level below it at the fourth or fifth trophic level only a small quantity of energy will be left so it is not sufficient to further support another trophic level and thus it limits the number of organisms or trophic levels in a food chain and the ecosystem may become more unstable if you have more than five trophic levels dalam arti kata lain kalau banyak trophic level organism di hujung-hujung tu tidak cukup tenaga juga lepas dia makan walaupun dia makan banyak so that's why usually it only ends after five trophic levels energy is eventually lost as heat to the surroundings okay so let's talk more about energy transfer when we talk about energy transfer we first start talking about where energy comes from the sun is the main source of energy for the food chain because it's going to you know supply energy to the producers the producers will trap one to five percent of that light energy from the sun and then convert the light energy to chemical energy through photosynthesis the percentage of light energy that is converted to chemical energy by producers are small because most of the light energy are reflected away. Remember this because sometimes people would ask you like if the plants are so strong like why can't they just use all of the light energy? They don't. They're only going to use a small portion because most of that light will be reflected off somewhere else. The primary consumers or the herbivores will be feeding on the producers which were doing photosynthesis and then energy will be transferred from the first trophic level to the second trophic level so bila tikus ini makan tumbuhan ini dia sudah bergerak uh, tenaga bergerak daripada first trophic level kepada second trophic level about 90% of that energy is lost to the environment so only 10% of the energy is transferred to the next trophic level and then this continues to happen when secondary consumers feed on primary consumers tertiary consumers feed on secondary consumers so makan punya makan punya makan 10% saja yang akan dibawa kepada level seterusnya okay so that's it that's all i need to tell you about energy transfer now i would like to explain a little bit more about this uh, saya, tapi saya main baca sajalah dia lebih kurang apa yang saya explain tadi okay 
Energy loss or heat loss occurs along the food chain and thus the energy transfer between trophic level decreases. About 10% of the energy available in a trophic level is transferred and converted to biomass in the next trophic level. And this 10% energy received is used to build new tissues and become available as food to the next trophic level. But not all energy received is used to build new tissues because energy is used for respiration, excretion, transpiration, and is eventually lost as heat to the surroundings. So about 90% of the energy will be lost anyway. We can calculate the percentage of energy transferred and the percentage of energy lost. So kadang-kadang ada soalan yang akan minta kamu untuk calculate Okay, berapa banyak tenaga yang kena pass kepada next traffic level. So, if you're calculating the percentage of energy lost, you will take the initial minus the final, that number divide by the initial times by 100%. If you want to calculate the percentage of energy being transferred to the next traffic level, then you will just take the final, divide by the initial times by 100%. So, if we're looking at this diagram here, and we want to calculate how many percentage of energy is lost between producers and primary consumers. We take 97155 minus by 8014. Kita ikut formula yang pertama ini. Kita akan dapat 89,141. To calculate percentage of energy loss, we take 89,141 divided by the initial, which is 97,155 times by 100, and that equals to 91.75% of energy loss to the environment. Now, try to pause the video. Try to do this yourself. Calculate the percentage of energy transferred from producer to primary consumer. So energy that is transferred from producer to primary consumer. Are you done? Let's have a look at the answer. The answer would be 8.24%. Now let's move on to the second question. Calculate the percentage of energy transferred from primary consumer to secondary consumer. So primary consumer to secondary consumer is here. Have you done your calculations? Then the answer for question number two is 9.58%. Let's have a look at the third question. Calculate the percentage of energy lost from primary consumer to tertiary consumer. So from primary to tertiary consumer, how much energy is lost? Are you done? Let's have a look. The final answer is amount of energy lost, 99.12%. If you have any trouble with the calculations at all, please feel free to ask me either in the comments below or message me personally, or we can discuss it during class as well. Now let's move on to the next segment. In this next segment, we'll be talking about ecological pyramids. So from the data that we gathered before, whether it is the number of individuals of that trophic level or it could also be the amount of energy in that trophic level, we can arrange that into a pyramid shape. An ecological pyramid is a graphical representation of the numbers of organisms, the biomass or the relative energy at each trophic level. There are three types of ecological pyramids. The first is pyramid of numbers, the second is pyramid of biomass, and the third is pyramid of energy. Ketiga-tiga ni adalah charta actually. Dia bukan piramid sebenar, dia adalah charta untuk menunjukkan bilangan organism ataupun uh, berapa banyak biomass yang ada pada setiap level atau berapa banyak tenaga yang ada pada setiap level. Okay, if you're ready, let's have a look at each of these ecological pyramids. We're going to start with the first type, which is the pyramid of numbers. This is an upright version. An ecological pyramid of numbers is a pyramid that shows the total number of organisms in each trophic level. The length of each bar represents relative numbers of organisms. So, kalau bar itu panjang, means organism untuk level itu adalah banyak. Kalau bar ada pendek, means organism untuk level itu adalah sedikit. Producers are always at the bottom of the pyramid, 
And as the pyramid goes up, the number of organisms decreases, but the size of each organism increases. So, walaupun di sini kita nampak producers dia banyak, tapi producers dia, contoh macam rumput, dia punya size agak pendek. Primary producer, uh, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer are usually gonna be fewer in number, but larger in size. Example of a food chain that would follow this kind of pyramid of number that is upright is plants eaten by rats, rats eaten by snakes, snakes eaten by owls or eagles. So ini upright bermaksud dia lebar di bawah, kurus di atas. We also have pyramids of numbers that are partly inverted. So dia macam songsang tapi bukan terbalik sepenuhnya. Macam contohnya ini. The number of producers is much lower than the number of primary consumers, but everything else is normal. Um, example of this are ecosystems in forest. So, for example, in a forest, there is a limited number of producers that will support many herbivores. Many herbivores will support fewer carnivores. Example, if the producer was a tree, the tree is followed by insects or caterpillars, and then at the bottom bar, it would appear small as many organisms feed on one tree. So, kalau ini ada kita punya food chain, tree eaten by caterpillar, caterpillar eaten by small birds, small birds eaten by hawk. Bilangan pokok sedikit. Memang satu pokok saja untuk yang kita tengok dalam kajian ini. Tapi dalam satu pokok itu ada banyak ulat bulu. Contohnya dalam di sini ada 2,000 ekor ulat bulu. Ulat bulu itu pula dimakan oleh burung, burung kecil yang bernama blue tits. So, in this example, we have 90 blue tits eating 2,000 caterpillars. The blue tits will be eaten by one sparrow hawk. And that is why this diagram, this pyramid of number is partly inverted. Dia separuh daripada dia adalah songsang. Because of the different number of producers and the relative size of the producer. We could also have a pyramid number that pyramid of number that is inverted. So ini yang songsang sepenuhnya. In under certain conditions there is an inverted pyramid of number. The organisms of one trophic level are parasitic on organisms of another trophic level. For example, if your secondary consumer is going to be a parasite like fleas, you could have a pyramid of number that is inverted. Many small organisms or parasites of one trophic level will feed on a large organism of another trophic level. For example, the number of cows is smaller than the number of lice. And in this example, it's paddy plants eaten by rats, rats eaten by fleas, fleas parasitized by parasitic par protozoa. A second example is grass eaten by rabbit, rabbit parasitized by fleas, fleas parasitized by parasitic protozoa. Okay, so itu saja untuk ecological pyramid jenis pertama. Sekarang kita akan pergi kepada ecological pyramid jenis kedua. Second type of ecological pyramid is the pyramid of biomass. So this one is talking about the size of the organisms. It shows the total dry mass of all organisms in each trophic level. So kalau kita ambil setiap organism pada trophic level itu, kita kasih kering. Ya. Kita akan dapat pyramid seperti ini. As the pyramid goes up, the number of organisms will decrease, and therefore the producer's mass will be larger than the consumer's mass. So this is example of pyramid of biomass inverted. You have a smaller mass of producers such as phytoplankton compared to primary consumers such as zooplankton. Example of food chain is this. And the reason why this pyramid of biomass is inverted is because as the phytoplankton grows, reproduce, and are consumed so quickly by the zooplankton, they never develop a large population size. So, kenapa kami masukkan ini di dalam nota? Sebab sebelum ini ada soalan-soalan pasir, dia pernah tanya, kenapa bila kita tengok ekosistem yang ada phytoplankton, zooplankton, dan ikan-ikan marine ini, kadang-kadang dia punya phytoplankton punya biomass Lebih kecil daripada zooplankton. Padahal dia producer. Jadi ini adalah jawapan yang disarankan lah. Which is why we're telling you this part about the phytoplanktons. Although the phytoplanktons are short-lived, they can reproduce very quickly, and thus the phytoplanktons can support a large mass of 
zooplankton bigger than their own mass. Point di sini adalah, walaupun phytoplankton tu nampak lebih sedikit berbanding dengan zooplankton, dia actually membiak dengan sangat cepat, so dia boleh saja tampung walaupun dia punya pyramid of biomass nampak macam tidak stabil. Okay, so that is the second type of ecological pyramid. We're moving on to the final type of ecological pyramid, which is the pyramid of energy. So this is the one that we use in the exercise with the calculations earlier. Pyramid of energy is an ecological pyramid that shows the total energy content of all organisms at each trophic level. Kita tengok berapa kilojoule tenaga yang ada pada setiap trophic level. Producers will have the most energy. And the level above them will have decreasing amount of energy. The pyramid of energy is always upright, never inverted. Kalau pyramid of numbers and pyramid of biomass, kadang-kadang dia inverted, dia songsang. Tapi for pyramid of energy, it is always upright. Dia memang sentiasa lebar di bawah dan kurus di atas. There are advantages and disadvantages to using each type of pyramid. So depending on what you're trying to compare, what you're trying to show, one type of pyramid may be better than another. So, ini kamu boleh baca sendiri apa kebaikan, keburukan menggunakan setiap jenis ecological pyramid. So, just a very quick summary of what we went through in this subtopic. In this subtopic 2.2, we talk about the food chain, the food web, the trophic levels, energy transfer between trophic levels, and also talk about the three ecological pyramids. The first pyramid is the pyramid of number. Second is pyramid of biomass, and third is pyramid of energy. So that's pretty much it for this subtopic. Um, what I would like you to do now is go ahead and make your own notes, and then when you're ready, please complete the exercises in tutorial question set, chapter 2, part B, questions 2 and 3. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Once again, I'm Miss Delia. I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you. Bye.